good morning, everyone, and welcome to OSTEP. And this is the first time that GTAPP gave a training course because we feel that uh, we, we owe the community a lot. And that the first thing we'd like to do is to train people how to use GTAPP data. Okay, and that was the idea at the beginning. Again, my name is Charles Sun, and I'm from U.S. National Oceanographic Data Center at Washington, D.C. And I'm the current chair for GDPP. And people said over there, Bob Keely, he was the one before me as the chair. And this started the course. So we have four days of the course. And today is the day one, just for give everyone a kind of general idea of what's going on within uh, this week. So it's the introductory section of the course. Now we will begin with section one course overview, which we are going right now. And so I began with introducing all myself. As I say, I'm Charles Sun, and I am a physical oceanographer. I'm not really IT people. I'm not really computer science people. I've just kind of learned on myself all the way up to today. So I graduated from uh, Taiwan National University with my master's degree. And I went to North Carolina State University in 1977, and I got my PhD degree over there. So actually, my background started from an analytical solution. You know, I, in the old days, I used to use a piece of paper and a pencil to derive a lot of equations and try to study from there. So I spent maybe four or five years. So I got a job offer from actually from University of Hawaii. So on the way from East Coast of U.S. to the middle of the Pacific Ocean, I spent one year at Harvard University as a visiting scientist to study the numerical forecasting, uh, particularly on the statistical analysis. So there's what, two, two components for the whole system. The first one is called the data model assimilation. The second one is called the statistical uh, model assimilation as well. So on the way to Hawaii, I spent three months at the U.S. Coast Guard Research R&D Center at Connecticut. So I applied the statistical model, which the, the method that had been used in the recent year, which regard with the object, OA, the object analysis, okay? And spent four years in Hawaii and got kind of seasick because I go in the middle of the Pacific Ocean and I feel going nowhere. So, so I decided to make change, so I moved to uh, East Coast, I, I, I took offer from NOVA. Everybody should be NOVA, right? So no, what's NOVA stands for? No. I was joking with people, I said, NOVA stands for no organization at all. <laughs> Not just a joke, yeah, anybody know NOVA? <laughs> yeah, so, so, so I, I joined NOVA in 1990, and it's almost, uh, 1990, almost 24 years, so it's almost a long time. So my first job in NOVA is doing my old business, the numerical forecasting in the U.S. East Coast, and, and, and gradually moving in much smaller scale, doing the forecasting for the coastal or harbor area, or, or the navigation. And we, at that time, I had a very crazy idea about, you now we have the air controller, we have air controlling system in the most every country, every airport. So I initiate a kind of very similar concept, not called the air, airport control, but called the vessel controlling system. When, when the vessel entering or leaving the ports, they need to know the ocean, the current, the tidal current, and the, the level of the water, right? So you can do a prediction that will save a lot of money you know, for, 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 for everybody. So that was my original idea. So the first model was implemented for the New York Harbor, and the model was still running as we are talking right now. So the idea was explained to many, many harbors in the U.S. area. You know, started from New York Harbor, uh, uh, Chesapeake Bay. I don't know if you're familiar with the uh, U.S. geographic area. So starting from the north, uh, northeast with the New York Harbor in the middle of the East Coast, which is called Chesapeake Bay, and the Tampa Bay, and moved to Galveston. Okay, so, so that's that kind of area. So that's, that's my first job in NOAA, and I, doing the modeling for maybe seven years, and it got another kind of spoiling. You know, I say, no, no model again. If you got model, you make out your own data, it's, it's not real. So I like real data, real things. So I moved to NODC, 
which stands for National Oceanographic Data Center in 1997, and got involved with the GDPP almost two, uh, one or two years year after. So, so I involved with GDPP almost for 17 years. That's really, really, really relatively long, you know. So, so, so that's my big one. And uh, I'd like to turn over to Bob, give an introduction about himself. Well, I'm Bob Keeley. I, uh, I used to work at the Canadian Oceanographic Data Center. We were called MEDS at the time, the Marine Environmental Data Service. Since then, we've gone through a number of different name changes, and actually I retired four years ago from that service. But I was one of the uh, initial architects of the DTSBP program, and so many of the things you'll learn about today are things that, that I built with colleagues in Canada. About 1988, we started, we had to change our, uh, our um, computer systems, and so we were looking to, to rebuild all of the way we process oceanographic data. And uh, we got talking to the current director of the USNOBC at the time, and they got, we got excited about creating this program called GTSBP. So in uh, 1990, it started, and uh, Canada was handling all the data that's traveling in real time on a GTS, which you will, if you don't know about, uh, you'll learn about. And uh, <coughs> the processing is done in Canada three times a week. It goes through a duplicate in the QC, and then the files are uploaded to the US NOBC, who take the real time data and combine it with the delayed mode into what's our, what we call the continuously managed database. Um, I actually, I should give you a little more background. I started off in, uh, in oceanography. I have a master's degree from Dalhousie University in Halifax in Canada. And then I got, uh, I worked at, into MEDS in 1977, was involved in a variety of programs there, Drifting Boys, and, and in fact, my first job there was a contract to work on the Bay of Fundy Tidal Power Project, but that was, that was the old days. Um, anyway, I got involved in the GTSBP at the time, rebuilding the data systems, and uh, worked on it for a number of years. My boss at uh, uh, MEDS was the original uh, GTSBP chair. When he retired about uh, 2000, maybe a little before that, uh, I took over until I handed the reins over to Charles. And so. When Charles asked me to, to be part of this course, I looked at the material and I said, oh yeah, well, I guess I know about those things. So here I am. <laughs> okay, and I do thank Bob for accepting my invitation as uh, one of the trainers. Because I feel that I cannot, I cannot do it alone for four days. And as you know, I, you know, look, I'm not really American people. I'm just, actually I'm Chinese. So, so English is not my mother language. And occasionally I will speak very fast. It's look like bullets. But I try to slow down and try to understand you, what you say. And I hope that you understand what I say. Or who you hope. This is just kind of very informal you know, the, you know, training course. And OK, now let, let's give a course description. And you don't have to take a note unless you, you have something that you know, not appeared on the, on the uh, PowerPoint slide. All the material, you know, I have to say, is, will be free available for everyone, you know, not, not just for students, but actually it's, it's, will be free available on IOD webpage or, or GTPP webpage. And I have to declare the material is prepared by the US government. Doesn't reflect the US government view. It's only reflect my personal view when I prepare the material. So this is a, a disclaimer from the US government. This is a personal view on the material present here only. So this course will demonstrate the data resource available from the GTPP, which can be assembled, synthesized, and displayed in a commonly used application program. For example, NC Browse Ocean Data View, which I hope that everybody already, most people know what ODV stands for. Another idea is we would like, would, like to, would like to let you know how to use an open source software, such as PER and R, particular R. Personal I view, this is very important, and this is kind of core part of the program, or the training course, okay? 
particularly for the developing country, not just for the developing country. I think right now, almost every country in the world has budget issues. Okay, we try, you no, know, it is at NODC. We try to use open source as much as possible for one simple reason: save money. So I feel that like this is important for the developing country. You can do everything, quote unquote, free. That will be excellent. So that's my intention to let user know how to use open source to save money. And right now, there are a lot of open source available. And so that's the course for this for this week. Okay. Now, this course we we provide a background reading on the web, so you can go back, you know, IOD web page maybe uh, tonight, and you can use it Wi-Fi in the hotel. And there's a lot of reading, uh, reading material uh, on, on, on the ILD training website. So, and uh, during the today, and the, maybe the, uh, another three days in, in this week, we will give you a hands-on exercise. Hands-on means a lot of interaction between students. I don't want to call students, you know. I would like to call participants and the instructor. So that's our interaction between you and me. So that's called a hands-on exercise. So, so in the normally the people say, we will get your hand dirty. We don't want you leave this room with your clean hand. So I would like to give you a more real experience how to use GTPB data as much as possible. So, so that's the whole idea for, for the course. So the objective of the course is only two. We, we like to promote the methodology used in GDPP program uh, as best exercise. Secondly, I like to facilitate the data sharing. So, so once you, this is not really required, but they encourage it that data user can share data with the GDPP program, and, so, and also share the user experience and so forth. So that's the two objective for the course. Okay. Now, after the course, I, I feel that you, the participant, can describe the detail how GDAP operates. Okay. No, not everybody knows how GDAP operates, but we hope after, the, after this program, you should be able to describe in more detail how GDAP operates. Number two, we hope that you can develop a greater conceptual design of the GDAP data structure. Okay, that's very important. Okay. Now, some might say, I really, don't have, I, don't, I really don't need the code. I can just learn by myself from the web. I think this is not a good statement. It's not a good idea, okay. The last one, develop skills in obtaining and manipulating the GTPP data through the hands-on exercise. Okay, and this is one of the three outcomes, so. Okay, and now, uh, another four more, three more. We would like you to demonstrate ability to visualize GTPP data using open source application, for example, o Ocean Data View, NG Browse, or the one we're going to create one at the end of the course, and, and build a fundamental concept how to manage ocean data. And, and, and this is leading to the very last one, provide you an insight how to build your operational data management system in your own institution. Okay. So, Claudia already showed you, you this timetable. I'd like to em emphasize uh, on day four, the last, the last day four, you see there's a student presentation, one and two. I anticipate, I hope, sincerely hope that everyone gave a 20 minute talk and leave roughly five to 10 minutes for discussion to, to share your experience with your colleague in the room, see, what you learned so far, and there's no pass or failed. So we are, we are not going to score you, so, so don't worry too much. Just, so well, let me know how good we gave you the course and that, so we can do a more impo improvement in the future. Okay, so anticipate that you will, give, you will ask or encourage to give a 20-minute presentation plus five to 10 minutes discussion, okay. After lunch on four day, we're going to kind of wrap up. We're going to say, to kind of give an overview for, for the course for the, uh, during this, uh, this, this week. Section 16, it's not really a section. Uh, I will hang around 
after the car break on Thursday. So I'm hanging around, and if anyone too shy to ask me the question in the public, that's the time that we can discuss a little bit. So, so that's general timeline for the for the course. Okay, this is what you're going to ask to give the presentation. Okay, so so as I said, we expect you to give a 20 minutes presentation, and this is number one, two, three, four. This is the area that I like you to give it. Uh, talk. Retrieve, you should be able to retrieve a field dilemma data, CTD data of the area of your interest. Okay, there's a, you coming from Malaysia or Vietnam, you can pick an area you're interested in. And through the GTP web, web interface, which normally we call GWI for short, GTP web interface, we, I will give you instruction during the course, either tomorrow or, or the, on, on Wednesday. Okay. Now, I would like you to convert into GTAPP spreadsheet form, which is really new for me. That format I just created, I just designed uh, early this year, is really for import into Ocean Data View. It's very important that you will be able to use Ocean Data View, which commonly used within IOD community. At least you should, you should be able to demonstrate how to plot a temperature salinity diagram. I use an ODV at least. Okay, and really number one, you should understand and ex ex describe how what kind of QG test has been performed in the data set we retrieved. retrieved. Okay, and uh, this is the basic skill I like you to take with you when you going home. Okay. Now, Claudia already showed you the the conduct of the of the classroom, but I like to emphasize you. The, uh, we don't have to repeat. Okay, don't don't type, and, and as a description to your colleague to the trainer, unless you are instructed to do so, which we will go have a lot into action. We will let you know the time to to type. Okay, uh, nice to your classmen. You know, I I don't say you will fight. You know, we're going to be good friends, so don't worry about that. The the one thing that I, I like to add in case of emergency. You know, Claudia already mentioned that. We see in this room, just walk, don't run, because you see there's so many cable on the, on the floor, so I don't want you to trap. <laughs> so, so walk away from this room and you do whatever you like to do. You can run as fast as you, as you can, okay? But don't walk, don't run, at least in this room, okay? Just in case you got trouble. Okay, this is the North Convention we will use, and uh, the text in italic, Korea found that's the reserve word in R programming. Like for example, you say mid, you can you can see that's the italic the kind of slant, you know. That's the reserve word for reserve word, reserved keyword for the R and maybe for per as well. And uh, the text in blue calibrate found is the response from the computer. When you type something and they will, will response from the, uh, the, uh, the server over there. So for example, you say hello world, you know, that's, the in, that's the response from the server. And the text in red, that's the chin the, the text you, I like you to type on the screen. So everything definitely in red, that's the, you have to type. Or you, that sometimes in the, in the course material, it's in black, and I will mention to you that you have to type, okay. Okay, and the text in both found is, is a highlight, it's just a highlight for the really important concept. Okay, the hands-on exercise. Exercise were appeared through the course. You know, um, hint and the solutions for the exercise are always available. Actually, it's, 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 it's on the website as well right now. But I don't hope that you look at the answer first. You know, just in case you really need that, it's really it's there. And we, have, we are going to have a very light programming. And, and uh, okay, decide to work as a team. Now you can talk to your colleague next to you, or you can talk, you can walk around. And say you know, so. So we will work as a team, and you can discuss your solution with your partners. You know, where will be then to try to reinforce your learning skill, and then try it. Okay, so just just relax, you know, learn as much as you can. Okay, if any question, just raise your hand. 
So this is the big one I anticipate, but don't worry too much. You know, this is kind of, it might make me much easier to communicate with you in terms of the ocean size or the meteorological size or even with the you know, upper management. Uh, and I anticipate you should know how to use the keyboard and you know how to use the window and, or, or, or Macintosh. And, and only with you, I'm not really a Macintosh people. I, 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 I really don't like a Macintosh at all. I just so used to PC. So sometimes you will see I have a little bit problem to find the keyboard and also the mouse and so, so forth. So you, you, would, you, you, you wouldn't tell. I'm not really a Macintosh people. I'm just Windows people, like Windows and Linux. So the third thing, I expect that you have some knowledge about the Linux, you know, it's very, very simple, or, or Unix, uh, they are the same term, very similar term. So if you have very simple basic background about the uh, Unix or Linux operating system. And uh, I hope that you have at least one of the following programming language. Either you know how to do program, programming in C, Fortran, IDL, you know, IDL stands for Interactive Data Language, it's very similar to MATLAB. And 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 or per so any anyone know it I, that's 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 the, that's the key issue so you know how to do program that that's number one okay otherwise you no know, you still welcome to here but you will be a little bit difficulty to type or something okay so we say we are and I like to learn who you are and particularly know what your background and I like to know what your expectation. So what do you want to learn this week? And it, okay, so this is the classroom environment. As you see, um, we, we have a server. And this is the server here. And you will, it's not really by Wi-Fi. It's, it's, it's a hard wire in the, on, on the ground. You see the cable sitting around. The server is sitting next to Claudia. It's not the small one. It's the laptop. It's not really a fast machine, but it works. Okay, and it's running uh, Ubuntu. So we will, t we will tell you, you know, how to set up that server, the kind of server. So your computer already hard code, hardwired to that server, but you are welcome to using Wi Fi, you no, know, you, you, you like. And on, my, on the screen over there, we'll tell you the, the IP address for that server, and which we will talk talking about to you later on. So the network name in our ocean and the password is to Flanders. Space Marine Space Institute and the all are uppercase with the, on the first word, first letter. The IP address will be 192.168.16.86. And the username, right now I just use the number, it's easy to, to, for me to ma manage. And the password called GTAPPOTGA. Now you can change password as you like, but you know, not, not required. Okay, and I will leave that on because later on we will I like to make sure that everybody is able to connect to that server. Okay, before we take break. Okay. So I will teach I will tell you how to do that. Okay, and, and this is already always on on, on, on the screen on the monitor, uh, T V monitor over there. Okay. So you will go home or you can install on your personal PC and you can you need to create a working directory as a GTPP called G-Training, and G stands for GTPP Training, and the desktop folder. But you can use either the PC, the uh, IOD PC, and create a folder on the desktop uh, called G-Training, or using your personal, uh, your shared, shared directory, as, as, as Claudia showed you earlier today. Either way is fine with me. The, if we need a party. Party is an open source, Software for communicating between the server and, and the client, and another called the admin, which already installed on everybody you know, desktop PC, that are required. So later on, I will demonstrate how to launch, how to run the X launch, which is admin, to make connection to that server you know, behind the, in, in, the, in the room. For Linux or Macintosh user, it's much easier. You don't to do, install anything. You just say XSH space, dash, uppercase, x, and the followed by username, okay. And, and, and the followed by add sign, that's a small, small mouse called add. And then the IP address, okay. The IP address is showing to the screen on, on, on your right hand side. Okay, this is the address, the URL to download 
Putty and Xmin, and I believe they are open source. Okay, because I didn't pay anything, so everybody should be able to download that. Okay, now Xmin is an open source X window terminal emulator. That's been in communication with the X server, which is running behind you. That runs on Macintosh window computers. Xmin server, Xmin X server is for window program that can be downloaded you know, on, on the, the URL on the screen. Okay, now this is, now right now I like you to, uh, it's already installed, but this here just for your information only, okay, because it's already pre-installed on your desktop. So, so you double click the admin, you now set icon which you download from the web, and then follow the ins installation uh, procedure, and you will or eventually you will get you will see an X mean icon on the server on, on your on your uh, personal PC. So right now, why would I try? Can you identify the X launch icon? Not the icon. I believe that's called. Uh, you you will, you will see a link on on your desktop. Can anybody find your link? We're going to make sure that you can connect to the server over there. And the part, the username will be USR zero one two o three o four and so forth. The password is over there. Okay. Did you? Can you see? There's a, on your screen on your window. You can identify it called X lunch. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because I have to care for just so many cable on the ground. Okay. Okay. So you double click, we will see. Uh, what is on my screen? Okay. So you will you will see this one. Everybody will see the lower you will have a lower left uh, icon that disappear. So stay there, don't touch and click on next. Select a multi, 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 multiple window option, and then leave the display zero, display number zero, and then click on next. Okay, now click on next. Okay, so you will see this screen, right? You this screen didn't show up. Please place your hand. Okay, so I, I wait. Did you see this screen? Okay. Now, right now, if you have to select, there are three options on the screen. You have to select start a program. Pick at the second one. Choose the option of start a program. Okay. Now, if you have difficulty, then raise your hand. Let me know. Okay. And I can stop to help you. Okay. So you will see this one, right? You, you select start a program and click on next. You will see another pop up on your on right hand side. Okay. So now you click next. Click on next. You will see this. Okay, don't do anything right now. You, you should be able to see this. So you, you see there's a, a text area, and you can see the called the X term. Okay, now you have to modify the X term, the parameter, otherwise the screen will become really small, really small. So the way to modify, to add option to the X term, I, this is my suggestion. I said this one is bigger for me. Okay, uh, and just after X term, put a space and add dash fa for face. Okay, dash fa. Enter dash fa. Okay. Oh, no, I, I, let me go back. Then enter fa right here. See that. Space dash fa space 
single chord or double chord, mono is a, is a face, is a font for, for your screen. And after that, you say space dash font size, FS14. Okay, you can make bigger as you like, but, but to me, 14 is good for me. Okay, and I will walk over, make sure that everybody enter this one. So, so you say X term, space, dash, FA, space, single chord or double chord, M, mono, M O N O, and the single chord or double chord, then space, dash, F S, font size, space, 14. So I said the size for the letter should be good enough for most of the people. Okay, and, and don't don't tap anything. I will walk around to make sure everybody know. Okay, this is this is very important. Otherwise, no, you 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 are unable to connect to the server. Okay. Just just enter starting from here all the way up to here. Okay. Okay. Now you, you, you select using peep using party. Now you click on next. Select party, the option party, using party. Okay, so you should be able to see so, uh, uh, another pop up on the right hand side on the screen. And uh, right now, enter 16, enter the IP address, which show on the TV monitor 192.168.16.8086 for the connect to computer. That's the IP address for that laptop behind the room. Okay. Now logging as user, enter your user ID, which starts by USR, user. USR 01 from my right left hand side and USR 02, 3 and, and so forth. You can enter your user username which is under and the DC this, this area. Okay, and enter the password 
which on the screen called GTHPP OTGA. Okay, let me walk oh, with everybody. Okay, uh, raise your hand, you need more time to do this. Okay, now the next one will be really challenging. And I, we never, I never did that before. I never tried that before because normally I just one user for that machine. So right now we have eight people try to connect to that machine and it might be take a longer time than normal. So right now just go ahead, just give it a try and we will see what can happen. Click on next. Okay, now you will see the blank screen. Continue, click on next. You will see this one, right? Okay, and it just say finish. So when you hit finish, when you hit finish button here. Let's see, I think I see. Here, when you, when, you, when you click on finish, now will actually will take you, connect you to the server on that text. So that will maybe take you know, a few couple of minutes, I hope. Okay, now we'll click finish and we'll start examining. Okay, and you see what happened next. Might take it you now a few minutes. So if you are lucky, I hope you were lucky. Uh, X win X term window will appear shortly. And you, you should be able to see this this screen. So, now you will see a, a, another another window pop up. Okay, so at least I'm. <laughs> you see that? Okay. Uh, this is what I expect. So some people will have to cut it. So I will. Let, let me see. No, don't. You people didn't see the screen. That don't worry. And I will. I will work with you during the coffee break. But that is only five more minutes for coffee break. So whoever whoever see the screen. On the, on, on, the, on the wall, type, type X eyes, X E Y E S. You will see the screen, the window on your screen, enter X E Y E S that right over here. Okay, see that? Okay, and don't do anything. Just enter X eyes, but in front, I have to put X. Okay, so everybody got it? Okay, once you type, just say, hit your return key, and you should see eyes pop out. Okay? So you will see this one, you will see X eye, and you can move your, 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 your uh, mouse. And you can see the eye rolling part of your, your mouse. It looks like one of the Manessia. You, you got it, right? Good, good. So who else? So Peru, got it. Okay, you can take a break. Manessia, you can take a break if you wish. 
Okay, now we have the other who can that go so far. So, you got it, right, Nigeria? No, not yet. Not yet. Okay. So, uh, it's, we, we can take a two minutes earlier for a power break, and I will work with you, make sure that you see this screen, the X, X, the X eyes. And this is the way that server communicates with the server. The client communicates with the server, and this is the key for, for the training course using the Linux. But there's another way to do it. You don't have to use a Linux. You can use an uh, X window. I mean, using a window PC. You can, you can, I'm going to ask ILD allow us to download program R on your, on your, on your desktop. And they're going to ask for that. So, so let's just take break for now. And, and we can, I can work with you. We have difficulty to uh, install the XMIN. <laughs>